In my last two videos, you saw the prep work and lifting of a 20 by 20 garage from the 1930s. For context, the old floor was cracked and heaving from 90 years of freeze thaw. The floor had massive inch wide cracks and one corner had sunk as much as three inches. The garage itself was in fine shape, so I decided to take up the challenge of jacking it up from the outside to completely replace the slab beneath. The old floor was a traditional slab on grade construction. Now this method is fine in milder regions where the ground doesn't freeze, but in cold climates they just don't hold up, especially on slopes or when there's poor exterior grading. When wet soil beneath the foundation freezes, it expands, and this pushes the slab up unevenly, causing it to crack. The solution to this is a base which is not subject to the upward pressure of the ground freezing and expanding. Traditionally, this has meant digging footings which extend just beyond the line of maximum frost depth. Most common is the spread footing stem wall, which is accomplished in three separate pours or three steps if you substitute cinder block for a concrete stem wall. But there's an easier and less costly alternative to a frost depth foundation. The frost protected shallow footing uses insulation to keep the ground under the foundation from freezing and preventing frost heave. In fact, this technique is the standard for residential building in many parts of the world, but especially in Arctic regions where reaching the frost line would mean excavating eight to 10 feet. There are ways to design frost protected foundations for both heated and unheated buildings. The detail for a heated space looks a lot like the traditional slab on grade construction, but with the addition of vertical and horizontal insulation at the perimeters. For unheated buildings, there are a couple of methods. Insulation in a single plane beneath the structure or insulation just beneath the concrete slab. This detail shows the slab poured separately from the wall. Obviously, insulation in a single plane requires a lot more digging. My garage will be unheated, so I need to go with a design that protects the entire slab from frost heave, not just the footing. But somewhat last minute, a friend convinced me to run PEX tubing in the slab for future hydronic heat. It was a one-shot opportunity. So my insulation should protect against frost heave when it's unheated and from heating loss in times that it's being heated. I decided to try using an ICF or insulated concrete form for my frost protected shallow footing. Now ICFs are systems of preformed blocks and corners made from high density EPS or expanded polystyrene foam. I figured if I added a bottom piece of EPS to the blocks, it could save me a lot of time on the assembly and construction of an insulated foundation. Okay, before I get into the video footage, I wanted to illustrate the steps I took after the removal of the old slab. Here's how it went. Raise the garage to accommodate a new slab height. Move sand, gravel, fill to the center. Excavate perimeter. In my case, this meant digging less than half as deep as traditional frost depth foundation. This is important when digging by hand. Dig holes for pilings at each of the four corners to frost line depth. Now this is a free bonus tip given to me by my concrete guy. Set edge form boards, square up the form, add kickers for bracing. I chose two by six pressure treated for the form so I could reuse them for my bottom sill plates. Add a four inch base layer of three quarter inch crushed stone to trench. Assemble ICFs, wrap with waterproofing membrane, and set in place. I removed the keys from the styrofoam, um, flipped it over, and cut four inches from the inside wall for a monolithic pour. Tie form boards to the fastening strips in the ICF. I placed a six millimeter vapor barrier under and on the inside of the ICF block to be folded down once the fill is leveled. Set floor drain in place. 
level sand gravel fill allowing for two inch under slab foam. Place six mil vapor barrier over the fill. Install two inch EPS foam with barrier tape at the seams. Tie number four horizontal rebar to rails. Two runs on the bottom, one on top. And also two by two L bars at the corners. Okay, remember the pilings? I also tied number four rebar vertically to the corner piling holes. Layout wire remesh and tie together and attach plastic chairs to keep the wire mesh and tubing up in the slab during the concrete pour. Tie PEX to wire mesh. I use six inch spacing. More on this in a future video. And then we get to the pour. Place the concrete. This is the only part I hired out. The monolithic pour will flow down, creating pilings to prevent corners from heaving and sinking. Let cure and cut control joints. Remove the kickers, remove the form board to reuse as a sill. I attached these with wedge anchors and of course you want to place foam sill gasket beneath the sill. While not required, add underground horizontal wing insulation. And finally, a cement board for protection of the foam and flashing. Here's the garage jacked up as far as it's going to go. Got the footing all dug out and needs to be cleaned out a little bit. And you're probably thinking that is one wide thickened edge. Decided to go with an ICF and that is 13 wide I think. But I need to give myself a little bit of room to drop it in and slide it under. Here is my form board. You can see it bows in. Uh, I'm gonna have to fix that. So just by removing a little bit of soil behind the form there, I brought that in straight. This is one of those, if I were to do it again, kind of things. Um, when I originally blocked uh, for the ledger on the outside. I knew I was going to place the blocks pretty close, but um, what I didn't anticipate is uh, having to excavate down right next to the blocking. I dug down a little bit, but but when you're you're gonna excavate right next to the block, as I am for a 16 inch ICF, uh, you're digging down at least 10 inches, and so I would recommend digging to the bottom of your footing and otherwise um, you could you could really compromise um, what your structure is is resting on here's the inside all formed up and ready for the ICF for the ICF corners with the inside wall cut down four inches for the turndown of the monolithic slab. This here is the corner piece of foam, two inch EPS that's going underneath of the ICF insulated concrete form. And there are going to be uh, essentially like pylons that are gonna go down to the frost line. The thickened edge, the ICF, is only uh, 16 inches but um, we're going to take the corners down to the frost lines 36 here and the corners will never sink here we are another day got the icf in and we brought in over a ton of three-quarter crushed washed limestone to fill in the trench around the perimeter, hauled out a bunch of dirt, uh, and then just used the, the fill that was in here and have it mostly spread even. Here's screeding the gravel fill, got the laser 
the other end and using a couple of one bys as rails to screed across to get give me my two inches for the under slab foam here's the laser you can see when I raise up the board you can see the mark I'm aiming for Here it is all leveled out, gave it some moisture and actually not going to tamp just because it doesn't really tamp that much. I uh, tried it and it fine, fine particles of uh, sand as well so just going to leave it as is, put the foam on top of here. Six mil vapor barrier. Next up is two inch foam. All right, we got the two inches of EPS foam in yesterday with the barrier tape on, and now we're gonna go to the remesh and the PEX is the last thing.